for today's video, I do want to speak about the sporting and financial side of the Nico Williams operation to FC Barcelona because we do have some breaking news regarding where Nico Williams could go if he does not end up at Barcelona and the other club could be Chelsea. Now, Di Marzio did state that Chelsea are now planning to go all in for Nico Williams and as of now, the ball is in Barcelona's court but their hands are pretty much tied as of right now due to financial fair play. They know how much they need to pay and they know his salary. Fabrizio Romano wanted to add on top of that and claim that while yes, Chelsea are interested, they're not necessarily going all in on Nico Williams as of now. And he has stated that Chelsea are currently not in the process of signing Nico Williams. Even though they appreciate his talent, they feel that the financial package of the deal is expensive and don't want to do anything crazy to get him. So it is quite clear that Chelsea are interested in the player, but as of now, Chelsea do have other priorities, which is the reason why Fabrizio stated that they are not in the process of signing Nico Williams. But let me tell you, as soon as we go into July, when the transfer window does open, Chelsea will reignite their interest. And that's very scary for a team like FC Barcelona because the last thing you want to do is to compete against a financial monster like Chelsea. Because look, point number one, my biggest fear is that Nico Williams' value skyrockets because of how well he has been doing in the Euros. It's the same thing that will happen with Pedri and Kylian Mbappe. Pedri had an amazing 2021 Euro tournament and then his value skyrocketed. Kylian Mbappe had an amazing World Cup campaign in 2018 and his value skyrocketed. The same thing is going to go on with Nico Williams and the moment Nico Williams has his value increased that is where Barcelona might have to step away and a team like Chelsea might not even find that as a problem as soon as they do take care of other operations of course then they will go on and assess the signing of Nico Williams now point number two on what I do want to speak on and that is is Nico Williams a perfect fit for a team like Chelsea like sportingly could it call Nico Williams name Chelsea to me have a good project can you imagine Chelsea having two players on the wings which is Nico Williams and Cole Palmer Chelsea would have an amazing attack the team is very young. Also, they unfortunately ended up in sixth place in the Premier League last season, which means that they're not going to be going into Champions League football. I don't know how Nico Williams is going to view that. And also, if you look at the squad of Chelsea, the only player that he is going to be recognizing is going to be Kukurea, a player that he does start with right now in the Spanish national team. Chelsea also have a new coach named Enzo Maresca, who is coming from Leicester City. He is a 44 Italian coach that is going to be replacing Pochettino, who did just leave two months ago. And so Maresca is going to come over here to Chelsea to build a brand new squad and it is a five-year contract that he has signed. Maybe this could be something that Nico Williams is interested in. Now, regardless where Nico Williams does go, whether it's Chelsea or he stays at Athletic Club, he's going to be seeing Europa League football. And I don't know how Nico Williams does view that. What if Nico wants to take a step forward in professional football and finally go into the Champions League? And that is where Barcelona can step in and say, we have the better sporting plan for you because Barcelona are going to go to Champions League football. They're going to be contenders for La Liga. They're going to be contenders for the Copa del Rey for the Spanish Super Cup. He knows the majority of the players at Barcelona, especially La Minima and Pedri. He knows the league. There's also going to be no language barrier between Nico Williams and any of the coaching staff nor the players. It's an easy transition. So sportingly, I think that Barcelona is a much better option. Now, three days ago, Nico Williams was asked about his future and this is what he stated. I recently just renewed with Bilbao. I'm very comfortable and happy there. I just renewed. So it is strange that you're asking me this question. So if you guys are wondering what this all means, does this mean that Nico Williams is not going to be going anywhere. No, he's simply just saying that because he's a professional. Why would he say that he is interested in moving away from Bilbao and to go to a team like FC Barcelona? Nico Williams is simply protecting all of the relationships right now, making sure that no bridges get destroyed. But we all know deep down, every single one of us know that Nico Williams is engaging interest with FC Barcelona, telling his agent to find a potential move to the club. We know what's going on behind the scenes, but when Nico has to speak to the media, of course, it is going to be something different. Tony Juan Marty has also just claimed that Nico Williams is now waiting to see if Barcelona pay for him, but he won't force or push a move since he's happy at Bilbao. It's Barcelona who has to make the first move. They know how much they have to pay to get him. And this is what's going to lead me towards the next conversation, right? Could the financial side be a huge problem, right? Going back to what I did state earlier in this video, his value might skyrocket, whether that's through a bigger fee or maybe his salary demands are going to be bigger. I don't know how Barcelona is going to view that because Fabrizio Romano also stated that Nico Williams is asking for bigger and more important important money in terms of salary to join a new club. And according to some sources, Nico Williams is currently earning 10.4 million euros a year, meaning that is 200,000 euros a week. And that is where Chelsea, now Barcelona, can win and reignite their interest if Nico Williams does make himself available and wants to move away from Bilbao. Usually when a player goes to a different club, right, and they're in their 23, 24, 25 years old type of range, 99% of the time they're moving to that new club to also gain a significant salary increase. There's also 
also some occasions where we see players go to a different and higher level team accept a low salary because they simply just want to have more success in their career but i feel like with nico it's going to be something way different barcelona have to negotiate a salary strategy with the player i think that in his first year if he were to come to fc barcelona we would pay him what he currently earns right now which is 10.4 million euros and then as the seasons go by year after year we increase it per year so we go from 10 million euros in his first season and then in his second season 15 million euros and then in his third season is 20 million euros and we can also add in bonuses etc etc chelsea on the other hand i know they usually like to come in and say okay you currently earn 10 million euros a season in your first year we will double your salary or maybe even triple your salary no problem chelsea can do that barcelona can't but this is one of the strategies that barcelona can do if they really want to have an extra type of persuasion for the player if he's truly looking for a salary increase in his new club moving on towards the next conversation i do want to have a conversation with you guys about la minimal it's more about a question than an actual subject because it says here that barcelona has been considering the possibility of giving la minimal the number 10 shirt for next season and one of the reasons why is because marketing and the timing which is going to be the club's 125th anniversary so can you imagine la minimal wearing the number 10 shirt at barcelona next season at the age of 17 years old let me tell you guys i know that many of you guys have been trying to request for barcelona to just retire the number 10 shirt because messi has done so much with that shirt it should be retired and never be used again but no we cannot do that a club cannot retire a shirt number because it is part of the league regulations right now ansu fati does have the number 10 shirt i think that many are, are scared in a way because i think that whoever does maintain the number 10 shirt does have more pressure on top of them which is the reason why i believe that the audience and the fans don't want anybody to have the number 10 shirt because there is huge demands and expectations but i think that if you give someone like la minya mal the number 10 shirt i think that would be fine because i look at yamal i look at how he plays i look at his facial structure his mood his body language like everything all around right and he just does not seem nervous i don't know if he practices stoicism or something like that but la minya mal just does not look bothered i think that if you give him the number 10 shirt he will be fine we just have to make sure that on our part we don't say la minya mal is going to be the player to carry barcelona for the next 20 years or he's going to be the next messi because that that is one of the biggest mistakes that many of us had when ansu fati took the number 10 shirt we were saying that ansu fati was going to be the cornerstone of this project that we were building and that ansu fati is going to be meeting the messy numbers because all of us were hyped and unfortunately ansu fati could not deliver due to injuries and then came the mentality issues with la minya mal i think that first things first if we give him the number 10 shirt let's also make sure that he does not play every minute and in every game because that is what's going to lead to, to injury and then eventually the same thing could go on like what happened with ansu fati a mentality issue might occur because if you get injured and you're wearing the number 10 shirt you're gonna get nervous you're gonna be like oh my god i'm missing out on all of these games and i'm wearing the, no the number 10 shirt people are counting on me and then you're gonna start self-doubting yourself so i think that yes okay fine give him the number 10 shirt but protect the player give la minya mal some rest currently he's playing in the euros there is no reason for him to go into the preseason and play every match and then start in la liga and play in every match and play in every minute this is why it's important for someone like rafinha to stay because i think that rafinha can be a great backup to la minya mal a player who i just don't think would leave because he is purely a hansi fleek type of player and if you guys are also asking does la minya mal really need to have the number 10 shirt like does he have the profile and to me i think that he does he's more of a 10 than ansu fati ever was la minya mal at the euros in 2024 so far has created the most big chances with a total of three and he's also in second place when it comes to successful dribbles with a total of seven and at just 16 years of age he is showing that he is becoming a great dribbler and a great creator that is exactly my friends what a number 10 should be which is the reason why they want to give it to yamal more than anybody else and so let me know in the comment sections down below do you think that la mini mal should be given the number 10 shirt in the next season or do you believe that it is too soon and we should wait about three to four years but somebody needs to have it somebody needs to have the 10 because ansu fati will be coming back and there is a high chance that ansu fati could be leaving barcelona this summer so that is it that is going to be wrapping up today's video thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one